Hello my YouTube friends. I was doing some cleanup on my PC today and I saw this message right here. It says my machine doesn't meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11. I was a bit surprised by this, but it is an old machine. It's easily more than five years old. So a lot of you who have seen me stream probably wonder, how in the heck can I do all the things that I do on my live streams with this old piece of junk? In fact, the most common question I get is, what do I need to do a great stream? And this is always so hard for me to answer because I'm able to do so much with so little. And the reason in this case is that I've worked with and been a part of the tech troubleshooting world for my entire life. So I thought, instead of telling you what equipment you need, why not show you how to get the most out of what equipment you actually have through optimization? And then, if it's not enough for what you want to do, you know it's time to upgrade. So today, I'm going to walk you through how to optimize your live stream and show you how to properly test your stream and setup so that you can have a flawless live stream. So let's get to it! My goal with this channel is to help you become a better live streamer and maybe entertain a little bit in the process. So please take a moment and let me know in the comments how I'm doing. And while you're there, leave a thumbs up. This really does help YouTube to share this video with a wider audience. And if you aren't subscribed, please do. This goes a long way towards helping me continue to make content that helps you. And it's totally free, so thanks. Big thanks to Own for sponsoring this video. Owned is a website that offers anything a Twitch streamer could possibly want. On Owned.tv, there are thousands of overlay packs with alerts and stingers built in, as well as emotes and badges, and like I said, just about everything you could want. But what really excites me is the Own Pro site. On Own Pro, you download a plugin for OBS, and in OBS, you can browse and select from thousands of overlay packs that download and are set up completely right out of the gate in OBS. You can add a alerts and labels and modify the text and even create custom layouts in just a few minutes. And they all have custom stingers that are set up with the profile so you don't have to do anything. You just download them and they're ready to go. In just a few minutes, you're gonna have a professional stream that looks like you spent a million bucks. The best part is for just a few bucks a month, and I mean less than that crappy Netflix subscription you never use anyways, you're gonna have access to every single one so you could change it up on every stream in just a few minutes if you really wanted to. So take a second and check out Own TV and Own Pro. Down below there are links in the description for each one. If you have the means to support the sponsors that support this channel, it goes a long way towards helping me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks! The first thing I'm going to do today is show you how to optimize your setup and your streaming assets so they tax your computer and graphics card as little as possible. Second, I'm going to show you how to test your stream setup so you can see how it works and spot potential issues. Third, I'm going to show you how to fix the issues you might find after you test your stream. There is almost always a way to fix it. It may not be what you want, but it's better to have it work properly than for it to lag and buffer and drop audio all over the place. Once you finish this video, you're going to know how to optimize and test your OBS streams. You're also going to be able to adjust it for great results based on your equipment and connection. So let's dig into your setup and optimizing your live stream. Streaming assets. When you live stream, the first thing you want to do is remove all points of variability and failure. That means Wi Fi. You can't control the signal or the interference from outside sources, and it's just not reliable or fast. We are removing the pieces we can't guarantee will work, and believe me, Wi Fi is convenient, but it's not solid or even good for a live streaming connection. This includes any platform you use for your stream as well. So if you stream a console platform like Xbox or PlayStation, you gotta plug them into the network as well. Eliminate Wi Fi. 
That's step one, and cables don't cost all that much. Let's hop into OBS and get everything all set up. The first thing we need to do to optimize our stream is find out how fast we can actually stream. So we're gonna need to do an internet speed test, and you can just type in internet speed test in your browser search of choice. You can just use pretty much whatever one you want. This one will work just fine. You can click go, connects, and does a speed test. Now, we don't really care about the down download speed that doesn't really matter all that much at all we really care about the upload speed so this is going to take a couple seconds and there we go so we have about 20 megabits per second on our upload and we just want to know what that number is now we want to take a look at this nifty chart and you can see over here on the left this gives us the stats for YouTube and Twitch this is the internet speed that we need to stream at each of these resolutions and each of these frame rates so if we want to stream at 60 frames per second in 1080 on YouTube, we need to have at least 5.6 to 11 megabits per second. Now we had 20, so we're good. The same thing applies for Twitch. If you want to stream at 1080, 60 frames per second, you need between 5.6 and 7.4 megabits per second. So now that we know what we can actually stream at, we know it is possible for us to stream at 1080, 30 frames per second at a full 6,000 kilobits per second bit rate. We know that it is possible to stream at the 1080 by 60 even at the full 9000 kilobits per second bit rate. And of course we can stream at all these bit rates down here. Now we have our settings. We know what we can stream at. So now let's set it up and optimize it. Let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to click settings and the first thing we're going to do is go to our output. And I want to change it from simple to advanced and we're looking at the streaming. Now I have an NV encoder which makes my life a lot easier I can just set my kilobits per second to 6,000 because of course I'm going to stream at 30 frames per second if I was going to stream at 60 frames per second I could set this to 9,000 quality is a good preset I could bump it up to max quality if I like and if I'm going to be streaming video games I can check look ahead and psycho visual tuning I'm not going to be doing that so that will be just fine I'm also going to be streaming in 30 frames per second so I would leave this at six and click apply. And now we have our stream maximized right here. But if you're in X264, you're going to go ahead and do the same thing. You're going to set your bit rate right here to 6,000 if you're gonna be streaming in 30 frames per second. And you're going to adjust your CPU preset usage to something that's reasonable, good quality, and won't tax your machine too much. You will have to actually mess around with this if you notice problems with your machine. We'll get into that in a minute. So now that we have have our encoders set up the way that we want them we need to go ahead and go into audio we want to disable all of this and we want to set our audio monitoring device to however we're going to be listening to our stream generally speaking you want to use your headphones so you set it up for your headphones that's how you would be monitoring your actual stream next we want to go into video and we want to set our resolution you want your base canvas and your output scaled resolution to be exactly the same so we're going to stream at 1920 by 1080 we are going to have our output scaled resolution at 1920 by 1080 we have uh, 30 frames per second if we were going to stream at 60 we would set this to 60 you don't need to change anything else and now our settings are optimized for the stream that we're going to produce all we have to do is click apply and now we're ready to start to set up our scenes and get those optimized for our live stream the last part of optimizing our stream is to go ahead and and resize our assets. Now, make sure that all of your assets are in the native size of your canvas. So if you're streaming in 1920 by 1080, anything that you use on your stream should be 1920 by 1080. If it's not, go into DaVinci Resolve or Premiere or whatever you use to edit video and rescale those videos to the proper size. Then you wanna go ahead and take those MP4s and drag them into Shutter Encoder. Shutter Encoder is a free encoder you can download it for absolutely nothing there is a link 
in the description so you can check it out. You just want to drag these in here. This includes your overlays, your transitions, anything that you're going to use on your live stream, you want to drag it in here. Then you want to choose the function VP9. This will change those files into WebM, which is a much, much smaller file size. If your files have any sort of alpha graphics, you may want to do those separately. That would include things like overlays and stingers. And when you have them in here, you just go in and you go to advanced features. You enable the alpha channel. Once you have all of your stuff set up and you can do 10 or 15 or 20 files in here, if you like, you just click start function and it changes all of these into a much smaller file size that makes it really, really easy for OBS to use. So we're optimizing our actual video assets and our overlays and our stingers and everything that we use in our live stream to make it as easy for our computer as we possibly can. And that's all you really need to do to optimize your stream. In all the videos I've done about troubleshooting a live stream, I don't think I've ever shown you guys how to actually test your live stream. Everything might work great until the machine is encoding and actual signal is sending out to the service. But that might be the end of it. Encoding could be a huge problem or other things. So let's test our stream. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up our stats window over here. You can see I've got it docked into the thing so that we can use it. Next, I want to go into my YouTube and we're going to go to go live. And what we want to do is just go to stream right here. And we're going to go ahead and copy out our key. Now I want to reset the key. I don't want to use any keys that I used before. We're going to copy the key. Now you can see right here, privacy, unlisted. You can go ahead and edit this so that you have a different privacy setting, but we're doing testing. So we want it to either be private or unlisted. If it's public, everyone is going to be able to see. And if there's nothing that we need to test with the chat or anything like that, we want to make sure that it's unlisted so that no one is watching. We're just doing the testing. So we want to make sure that it's unlisted. And we just copied this out and we're going to go and put it in our OBS. So we just need to go to settings, go to our stream, and we're gonna go ahead to YouTube, and we're gonna paste our stream key in there and apply it, click OK, and we should be able to click start streaming. And now we're gonna see we are live, we've got our CPU usage, we're not dropping any frames, everything looks pretty good. You can see down here our kilobits per second, we're steady around 6,000 kilobits per second, which is exactly what we want. We can go over here into our YouTube page. We have our stream going. It has an excellent connection and we are all set. We are actually live streaming and we are not having any problems keeping up on this end. Excellent connection. So I'm going to go back into OBS here and we're going to try to push the system to see what it's doing. So all we have to do to do that is to switch scenes. Let's get all of our animations going and everything that this thing does. Here we go. We'll switch to this scene here. Has some camera has some other things and we're still at six percent usage or less we're not dropping any frames our kilobits per second appear to be proper we'll go to the guest scene and this is where we would have a guest normally you want to test that if you can we'll go to guest scene two these are all things that you want to test. You see we hit 14% CPU usage there but we didn't drop any frames we're not lagging we're good to go Go over here to our intermission where we have a video playing in the background. We hit 13% CPU, but we still didn't drop any frames. Our kilobits per second is over 6,000. We'll go to the tutorial scene. Here we go. Everything appears to be working. We hit 15% CPU, but we're not lagging. We're not missing any frames. We'll go to the tutorial scene. We'll see how that works. There we go. Everything appears to be working properly. Our end scene as well. Then we can flip over here into our YouTube page. What we can do is turn on sound. We want to be listening on our headphones. And what we want to do is we just want to make sure that the audio is in sync. Now it should be, if the audio wasn't in sync, then our stats window would tell us right here. We would be seeing rendered frames and drop frames, but we want to make sure that our audio is in sync. So we're going to go back over here to intermission where we are talking and there's a video playing and we want to make sure that our voice matches up with what we are saying on our scene. So we're going to flip into here and now that we can hear the audio, we can see that 
our voices matching up with our stuff and we're good to go. Now, obviously there is a delay. That is not lag, that is latency. It takes a couple seconds for YouTube to process the video and put it up here on YouTube. So that's just the way it is. So this is never going to be real time, but it looks like we are functioning properly. If I go back over here, we're still good. We haven't dropped a single frame. We're still up above the 6,000 kilobits per second. Perfect. So now we've tested our live stream. We've gone through all of our scenes and we know that everything is going to work. Awesome. So when we wanna end our test live stream, all we need to do is go ahead and click stop streaming. We can go over into YouTube and we can end the stream. There we go. And we can dismiss this. And then if we wanna get rid of these, all we have to do is go into OBS, go to our content, go to our live, and you can see it's unlisted. All we have to do to delete these is select here and go to more actions, delete forever. And I understand, delete forever and boom. Now our unlisted test live stream is totally gone and we're all set. That's how you test a live stream. Okay, so hopefully everything went awesome and you're all set up. But if you had issues with buffering or stuttering or audio or anything else, well, how can we fix it? Let's get into it. All right, so what if you had any kind of problems up here? You were running with a really high CPU, you had a lot of frame render lags and all that kind of stuff, or you noticed any kind of lag at all on your stream, voices not matching up, that kind of stuff. What can you do? Well, the first thing you can do is go into settings and go into output and you probably can adjust your kilobits per second down a little bit. That will give you a little more headroom for your computer to do the live streaming. You could also change a preset. If you're using NVIC, you have to go down. So we'd go from quality to performance or max performance, which adjusts the visuals a little bit and makes it easier for the computer to handle. If, however, you are using the X264 encoder, you would go in here and you would adjust it up so it's super fast or ultra fast. Then you wanna test again to see if this resolves your problem. These will also give you much poorer possible live streaming quality. So you may wanna actually do a test live stream, download that test live stream and take a look and see what it looks like on your computer. Don't just delete it automatically, go ahead and do the test and then Go ahead and download it and check and see if it works all right. See if the voices are all matching up and everything else. But if you adjust these settings, you're probably going to be able to tell pretty much right away by what you get here in the stats window. If you're still dropping frames and you're still lagging and all that kind of stuff, then if you have it set to 60 frames per second, lower it to 30 frames per second, test it again. If you do all that and you're still having problems, the only real solution is to drop it to 720. And in order to do that, you're gonna wanna go into settings and go into your video and change this from 1920 by 1080 to the uh, 1280 by 720. And you wanna do that for both your base canvas and your output scaled canvas resolution. Then you wanna go and resize all of your assets. So open up Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, resize those assets from 1920 by 1080 down to 720. Make sure that you run them through the program again so that you turn them into WebMs and you try the whole thing and test it again. Now I realize that everybody wants to stream at 1080, but you can have a nice high quality live stream in 720 and it's not a big deal. Most people are watching these live streams on their cell phones anyways. They're not getting it in 1080 or 720. They're even getting it worse than that. The most important aspect of your entire live stream is gonna be your audio quality. You wanna make sure that's right. A lot of people listen to a live stream. They don't necessarily even watch the damn thing. So don't be all hung up on streaming in 4K or 1080, unless you're streaming games, in which case, well, if you're struggling to stream 1080 and 30, you probably need to just update your equipment because it's not fit to handle playing games and live streaming at the same time. And not too much amount of fiddling or anything else is really gonna fix that problem. You're gonna need some new equipment. If audio issues are really causing you problems, this video here dives into how you can fix those 
pesky audio problems. Once again, big thanks to OWN for sponsoring this video. Links to OWN and our other sponsors are down in the description below under sponsors. Supporting the sponsors that help keep the lights on here in the studio is a great way to help me continue to make content that helps you. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.